ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਇਟਸ ਓਵਰਵਲਮਿੰਗ ਸਟੈਂਡਿੰਗ ਹੀਅਰ ਰਾਈਟ ਨਾਓ ਆਮ ਹੰਬਲਡ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਐਡਰੈਸ ਆਲ ਆਫ ਯੂ ਟੁਡੇ ਯੂ ਸੀ ਈਵਨ ਇਫ ਆਈ ਐਮ ਨਾਟ ਫੈਮਿਲੀਅਰ ਵਿਦ ਈਚ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਯੂ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਮੇਡ ਅਸ ਆਲ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਆਈ ਗਰੂ ਅਪ ਲਿਸਨਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਸਟੋਰੀਜ਼ ਐਂਡ ਫੇਬਲਸ ਥਿਸ ਵਾਸ ਦੀ ਅਪਰੋਚ ਮਾਈ ਪੇਰੈਂਟਸ ਹੈਡ when trying to help us learn and grow the stories they shared have always given me courage and strength when i most needed <clears throat> this is definitely one of those times there is one fable in particular that comes to mind during this occasion a story about light and darkness that i would like to share with you a story most famously quoted by Jaswant Singh Kalra Once upon a time when the earth had never experienced darkness and mankind only knew the light of the sun for the first time the sun was completing its journey and began setting light was decreasing and the signs of darkness were beginning to appear panic spread rapidly amongst the people the sun will set and darkness will cover everything what will happen to us they cried the darkness became arrogant wanting to show its might darkness set its foot on the earth as the people hid in fear but it is said that far away in some hut one little lamp lifted his head and proclaimed i challenge you darkness i will be the light for the people and if nothing else then at least i won't allow you to settle around me i will establish light for myself watching that one lamp all the other lamps in every other hut arose and the world watched in amazement as these little lamps stopped darkness from expanding so that the people could see today we are those lamps trying to stop darkness as it tries to overwhelm truth the truth of what happened in 1984 and justice for the victims left behind did you know there are 6.9 billion people walking this planet and of those 27 million are sikhs so sikhs make up 0.39% of the world population we are known as the world's fifth largest religion but in actuality we are a minority and often get confused as hindus and muslims if i were to draw a chart the sikhs would be a tiny speck try to imagine just how small a community we are just 27 million out of 6.9 billion the bbc recently conducted a study reporting that the sikhs are the most generous people among all other religious people living in the UK and that the Sikh religion teaches its followers to be more generous than any other religions seva selfless service for the betterment of all was gifted to us by guru nanak and is deep within our dna we see examples of this all around the world every day look at our gurdwaras serving langar free food without discrimination and open to all in 1984 our beautiful city harmandar sahib our golden temple of amritsar along with many other gurdwaras were attacked and desecrated yet today these are the places where people find help within gurdwaras many from other religions backgrounds the homeless or hungry can find refuge and are asked for nothing instead they are fed and within some places 
are able to bathe with dignity thanks to our gurus who started the concept of langar and equality. Today, our city, Harmandar Sab, often referred to as the Golden Temple, is the world's largest free kitchen, serving 100,000 meals every day. And we see this mirrored in Gudwaras all around the world. Our tiny community is feeding the world. Then, The 1984 genocide of the Sikhs was a planned attack. Generations were destroyed as many Sikh women had to witness their husbands and sons being burned alive after brutal beatings. Women were raped, Sikh homes and businesses were looted and burned to the ground. And 33 years later, there has been no justice for these barbaric acts. The movement for justice must continue for the widows living in the colonies, the Sikh political prisoners languishing behind bars years after serving their sentences, and for all the victims left behind. The pursuit of truth and justice must go on. In the interim, what can we learn from this? It would be foolish not to ask ourselves this pertinent question. How do we ensure that these atrocities do not repeat themselves, as history often does? As a community, we are highly generous and have the wealth and funds to create change. So how do we actively and daily direct these blessings in the right place to help our most vulnerable brothers and sisters? As I deliver this speech right now, it pains me to tell you that another farmer in Punjab is committing suicide. Another newborn baby girl in Punjab has just had her neck snapped. I travel to Punjab every year as my foundation, Kirtan for Causes, works to educate impoverished children in Punjab. And more recently, we started building homes for those living in dire conditions. It's heartbreaking to see such desperation and suffering, to look into the eyes of so many children, many fatherless, to see so many widows struggling to survive, to hear the stories of their children addicted to drugs resulting in violence and crime. In 1984, we could not have predicted that an attack to wipe out innocent Sikhs to kill entire lineages was about to take place. But today, we know what is happening in Punjab. Allow me to share some facts with you. Out of the 27 million Sikhs on this earth, 76% are living in Punjab. So the majority of Sikhs of our brethren live in Punjab. What is terrifying is that within one generation, they face possible extinction. Allow me to break this down for you, and please bear in mind that these are unofficial and conservative numbers. In the June 1984 attack on Sidi Harmandar Sab, 3,000 pilgrims were killed. However, 8,000 pairs of shoes were uncollected. In November, of the same year, 10,000 men and boys were brutally murdered on the streets of Delhi. Between 84 and 94, another 150,000 Sikhs, mainly men and boys, went missing in Punjab. Today, in Punjab, over 50% of the rural male youth are addicts. There is female infanticide of approximately 275 girls, baby girls killed daily after they're born. A lack of investment in education has left a once leading state in literacy to a struggling and underperforming system where even a basic education is beyond many. There is an estimated 30 farmer suicides daily 
leaving more widows and orphans behind. Extinction. Today, Sikhi faces possible extinction. In 1984, we could not have foreseen or prevented the attacks, but this time, we know. Today, our hearts still struggle to make sense of the atrocities of 1984. It is an overwhelming burden to realize that the pains that remain time can never mend. Let these pains make us vigilant that nothing of this kind occurs on our watch again. Each one of us must take responsibility for creating the change that must happen not only for the victims of 84, but for those suffering in Punjab today. We must safeguard and cherish our community, lest it disappear from view. What gives me hope when I look back at 84 is the recognition of what our small community has accomplished since. We have lost and endured much, yet still we approach the world with love and generosity. This is why I believe that our mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, and children in Punjab will survive this because we will not forsake them. In each and every one of them, we see Guru Nanak. With each one, we are able to help, to feed, to educate. We protect our beautiful Sikhi and the benevolent principles given to us by Guru Nanak of truthful living, selfless and humble service, all the while remaining absorbed in love for God, which is within all. This time we know. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh.